Hi, everyone. My name is Sinduja Devarajan. I'm a second year medical student at Paul L. Foster School of Medicine. And my name is Adam Murillo Reese, and I'm also a second year medical student. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be talking about face masks and hand sanitizer, why they're important during the COVID-19 pandemic, and even how to make your own face mask. So let's get started. So this is an outline of what we'll talk about today. Um, we'll talk about how face masks actually work, how to take care of them, how to wear them, um, what are the, the mask rules for El Paso, and then we'll even talk about hand sanitizer at the very end of our presentation. Okay, and this is what we hope to accomplish. And, you know, we'll get started with talking about um, the masks you currently have at home. What are what are your masks made out of and what materials are they made out of? Aron, um, what are your masks made out of right now? I have a lot of fabric masks. Um, and just a heads up, I like masks that have crazy designs on them. Me too. I need to get some more of those. So, you know, we wanted to to tell y'all that, you know, there are a lot of different ways you can make masks and we have videos on how to make a sock mask, t-shirt mask, bandana mask, and even how to sew your own mask out of fabric. And today we'll go over a sock mask. So if you're interested in making a mask while you watch, you can go grab some old socks and a pair of scissors and, and join us. Um, we also want to point out that there are special masks that you may have seen um, around town. These are uh, medical grade masks. We have N95s in the bottom left corner, as well as some surgical masks. And these masks have been manufactured for one time use, and they are meant to be worn by um, healthcare professionals in the healthcare settings. And, you know, while they're being also worn by community members, we want to emphasize that community members, we can wear masks made out of almost anything, and then we can actually wash them and take care of them at home. And we'll tell you more about that coming up here. All right, so how do face masks actually work? Well, if you look at the bottom right here, you see that there are these green kind of funny looking circles coming out of this person's mouth and nose, and these are respiratory droplets. So you push out respiratory droplets when you talk, when you sneeze, when you cough, if you're singing, if you're shouting, and these exit your mouth and your nose. Now, the role of the mask is to act as a physical barrier. So if you see this, you know, this yellow line here, that's the cloth barrier of the mask. And it kind of catches those respiratory droplets and it prevents them from going out into the air and being inhaled by other people. So that's how a face mask actually works. You're preventing your respiratory droplets from going out into the air. So if you look at the graphic on the left here, the person at the top who is not wearing a mask, um, for example, has COVID-19. And when they're talking, look at how many respiratory droplets are out in the air. So many. And the people who they're talking to or the people on the receiving end are the ones inhaling all of those droplets. Now, if you're wearing a mask on the receiving end, you're inhaling fewer droplets, but you're still inhaling some droplets. But look at the person who's not wearing a mask. They have the maximum exposure to these respiratory droplets. Now, when you put on your mask, look at how the number of respiratory droplets has completely decreased. There's way fewer respiratory droplets in the air. And that is provi that's providing a lot of protection to the people on the receiving end. Look at the minimum exposure. When both people are wearing masks, there's minimum exposure. So this really shows that my mask protects you and your mask protects me. If we wear our masks together, we're, we're helping our community and we're protecting those around us. Okay, so how to wear face masks. You might have been out at the grocery store or gone out to pump gas and you may be seeing people wearing their masks in all kinds of different ways, but there is a correct way to wear your face mask. Now, the person on the right is not wearing their mask correctly. And why is that? Well, it's because their nose is exposed. And remember, we talked about earlier that your respiratory droplets, they get they exit your body through your nose and your mouth. So you have to protect and you have to cover both your nose and your mouth when you're wearing your face mask. The person on the left is wearing it correctly. You can see here that the mask covers very completely the nose and it's tucked under the chin to completely cover the mouth and provide a secure closing here. So you wanna make sure you're covering your nose and your mouth, otherwise you're not being as effective with that mask. Okay, so when you're removing your face mask, when you've you you know you've gone out grocery shopping, 
you're coming back home and you want to get that mask off, the first thing you do is wash your hands. Now, um, you may have heard that the best way to wash your hands is to wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds, but it's pretty boring to stand there and count to 20 or, you know, try to try to time out 20 seconds, right? So I have a little song that I like to sing when I'm when I'm washing my hands. So the first thing you're going to do, you still have your mask on. You haven't touched your mask yet. You're going to get some soap on your hands. And then you're going to sing a little Queen song that we're all familiar with. If you've heard of the We Will Rock You song, you can sing the chorus line three times, and that is about 20 seconds. So if you want to join me, wherever you are, feel free, and I'm going to start singing the song. So you take the soap and you rub it into your hands and you get started. So it's We Will, We, we Will, We Will, rock you. Will rock you. We will, we will rock you. All right, one more time. We will, we will rock you. All right, that's great. And that's about 20 seconds. Then you take your hands and you rinse it under the water. Okay, so you're taking those 20 seconds and you're really scrubbing your hands here. You're going with your nails in between around your thumb, in between your fingers over your hand and even around your wrist like this and that's the 20 seconds then you rinse with water okay so now that you have sung your song you've washed your hands now you can remove your face mask but when you're removing your face mask the most um the safest way to do it is to only touch the ear straps you know if you touch the front of your mask you're you're making contact with the part of your mask that has possibly made, you know possibly collected droplets from other people out of the grocery store when you're walking around. So if you touch the front of your mask, then you you know you touch your keys, you touch your door handle, then you're spreading those those germs all over your house. So don't touch the front of your mask. Only handle the ear straps and then remove the mask that way. Once you remove your mask, you know, don't place it on your countertop. Don't put it in a drawer. You don't want to spread those droplets. You don't want to spread those germs to like the rest of your surroundings in your house. The best thing to do is to put it directly in the laundry or take it directly to a sink and hand wash it right away. Um, as far as laundry, you can place the mask directly with your other clothes. Um, and we'll talk more about how to wash your mask coming up here in a bit. All right. So we know that, you know, schools have been starting and while the, you know, the, the opening dates keep changing, you want to get your kids also interested in masks because it's important to keep them safe as well. And we like to encourage our parents and teachers and other people who are interacting with kids to tell them that it's cool to wear a mask. Even superheroes wear masks. So that's a, get, that's a great way to get them excited about it. Um, you can also include them in how you make your masks. For example, you can buy some fun fabric like Aron said. He likes to get fun designs and cool um, possibly superheroes or his favorite cartoon characters on there. And um, you can even get a white cloth and have your kids draw on the mask and make their own um, show and tell item, for example. So... Um, another thing to consider here is have your kids practice wearing their mask for long periods of time. We know it can be uncomfortable, but one day have them wear it for 20 minutes while watching TV. Then the next day, have them wear it for 30 minutes, then 40 minutes, then an hour. And over time, you know, you want to get your kid used to wearing it for longer and longer periods of time. All righty, folks. So we learn how to take our masks off. We learn how to get people accustomed to wearing masks. We learn, uh, well, we're one step closer to being a lead singer for our cover band. But now, before we get too excited, it's time to talk about how to wash our masks, keep them clean. You can wash them with your normal laundry, or you can wash them by hand. It's recommended that you wash your mask after every use, every time you go outside and then you come back in. Um, that can be kind of a hard recommendation to follow. So, you know, another recommendation is that you probably have more than one uh, mask available so that you don't have to run the laundry every single day. Um, make sure if you want to use the washing machine that you're washing the masks and the rest of your laundry on the uh, warmest appropriate setting. And if you want to wash by hand, you can choose to use bleach, four teaspoons of bleach, 
for one quart room temperature water. Let that soak in there for five minutes and then rinse your mask with cold or room temperature water. You can also choose to use soap or detergent um, and preferably use hot water when you do this. Uh, if hot water is not available, wash the mask and the soap and detergent at room temperature water and then boil the mask in, in some water for one minute. Uh, for drying, again, you can just include it with your regular laundry, might be the most convenient option. Um, on the highest setting, or you can choose to air dry. Just make sure if you choose to go this route that you have the mask placed under direct sunlight. There are some mask rules for El Paso. El Paso just topped out over 30,000 cases um, as of October 15th, 2020. In July, Governor Abbott put a mandate saying that face coverings that cover both the nose and mouth are required in counties with over 20 COVID-19 cases. Everyone over two years old must wear these face masks when they're in buildings and public outdoor spaces. And one thing to remember that there are punishments uh, for not adhering to these mask rules. Uh, first offense, you can get a written war warning in any subsequent offense, you could be subject to up to a $250 fine. Uh, if you want more information locally, you can call 311. You can also visit epstrong.org. Or for national information, you could visit coronavirus.gov. A couple special considerations for masks. Uh, if you're hearing impaired, hard of hearing, uh, wearing a mask can really disrupt communication with other people. So uh, you could either consider writing communications down and sharing notes with other people, or you could look for a mask like this model shown in this photo um, where there's a clear area over the person's mouth. And if you're accustomed to lip reading, um, this mask would still allow for that. If you're concerned, maybe you have a medical condition that makes wearing a mask impossible or uh, difficult, something you should ask your healthcare provider about what are some things you can do. Face shields. I have been seeing a lot of people wearing face shields when I'm out and about getting groceries, uh, running errands. Here's the thing. They're not officially recommended, but they're, they're an extra layer of protection, um, but they're not officially recommended for people to wear, and they certainly don't replace wearing a face mask that covers both the nose and the mouth. So if you do choose to wear a face shield, make sure you also wear a face mask uh, appropriately as well. If you're exercising, you're in the, you're swimming or something, your mask gets wet, you know, it can make it a little bit harder to breathe in the mask and just keep that in mind. If you're concerned that uh, your workplace has some moving parts and maybe it's a safety issue, you can always uh, find a mask either that doesn't have long um, threads or uh, consult with your occupational safety uh, representative. And then of course, if you're in a restaurant uh, eating, eating food or consuming beverages, the mask mandate does allow for you to take off your mask uh, at this time. Some frequently asked questions that we've been getting. Can I leave my mask on the dashboard? It certainly makes it easier to remember the mask. I know that I've forgotten my mask at home a couple of times, and so I gotta, oh, I gotta run back and then get the mask, and uh, there goes 20 minutes of your day. Uh, so you could leave your mask on the dashboard. El Paso does get hot at times. Um, and, you know, the heat may uh, uh, kill the virus, any virus that may be on your mask. But you also want to consider how clean your car is in general. Maybe there's other dust uh, in your car, other things that touch your mask. Uh, and so you want to be really cognizant about that. Another thing to be aware of, the thousand year winter is coming to El Paso. It's not getting as hot as it used to get. Uh, so you know, maybe it's not, your, your mask isn't gonna be um, as hot if you leave it in, the, in your car. Where can you store your mask? Uh, you wanna make sure that it's in a clean, sterile place, not touching anything else in your apartment, car. You could leave it in a Ziploc bag uh, or a brown paper bag and just store them in an area that's convenient so that when you're going, you're about to leave, oh, it's right there as I pass by. And, Another thing, if you want, if, if maybe you're going to work 
and you want to bring an extra one just in case maybe halfway through the day your first mask uh, gets wet or gets some something on it um, you know you can always have a, a backup in a ziploc bag pull it out of your bag and then just switch them out can i contaminate uh, decontaminate my mask with uv light so if you have a UV light at home, there's really no surefire way to um, ensure that whatever cleaning protocol you're following with your UV light is really uh, effectively cleaning your mask. So leave UV light decontaminated, uh, decontamination practices um, on the shelf for a little bit. Go ahead and just wash your mask with uh, either the bleach or detergent or with your regular laundry instead. How many layers should your mask have? At a very minimum, it should have two layers. One easy way to see if your mask has enough layers, eh, hold it up to the light. If you can see the light through the mask, your mask probably is too thin. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have uh, multiple layers because as we pointed out earlier, this is a physical barrier that's supposed to stop whatever respiratory droplets are coming out of your mouth whenever you're breathing, talking, singing, uh, yeah, uh, you could also try to blow out a candle. Uh, if you're able to blow out a candle with your mask, uh, it's probably too thin. Is it beneficial to wear eye coverings like goggles? You could wear goggles and that would add an extra layer of protection because, um, you know, you can get coronavirus, uh, through your eyes, but goggles aren't officially recommended to be worn. They certainly don't replace using a, a face mask that covers your nose and your mouth. But if you want to wear goggles, uh, you can. It won't add any protection to the people around you, um, but that's just something to keep in mind. And then now uh, a new thing about COVID-19, people talking about aerosol transmission. Is the virus airborne? And what is, exactly does this mean? So... When you're talking, you're exhaling, uh, singing, you are emitting respiratory droplets um, from your mouth, your nose. Some of these respiratory droplets are larger or smaller than others. Uh, the larger ones may tend to sink to the ground as soon as they get emitted. The smaller ones might stay in the air or suspended for a little bit longer. So let me pose this, ex uh, this example to you. If you, if someone who has COVID-19 is in a relatively small room and they're breathing, maybe they have a mask, maybe they don't, they're still emitting these respiratory droplets. And then they leave. And a couple minutes later, you walk into the same room. The larger respiratory droplets have likely sunk, uh, sunk to the ground by now, but there, are, there is possibility for the smaller respiratory droplets to remain suspended in the air. So if you're walking around, maybe you don't have your mask on uh, when you're in this small room, you can still breathe in those smaller respiratory droplets that were emitted by the COVID-19 positive person who was in the same room before you. So something to consider, and it's another thing that highlights the importance of wearing a mask. Let's talk a little bit about different types of face coverings. Folks, you want to make sure that um, the face covering you're, you're using is actually doing what you think it's supposed to be doing. So the gold standard here, we have the N95 mask. Um, that means that it's going to filter out 95% of whatever you're breathing in. We want to make sure that we leave those specialty masks to folks who are working in healthcare settings and may be coming into regular contact with people who have COVID-19. On the other side of the spectrum, we have these masks. I've been seeing people wear them. They have a built-in valve vent. Well, first of all, it, uh, it might be really challenging to actually verify if that valve or vent is doing what it claims to be doing uh, to the extent it claims to be doing it. And another thing is, it's not going to be protecting any other people uh, because it doesn't filter what you're breathing out and you're putting out uh, into the air. Just slightly above that, I, I see some people wearing scarves and bandanas, uh, and that should be considered a last resort. We want to make sure uh, that we keep in mind 
uh, folks, a fabric mask, cotton even, uh, just covering the nose and the mouth does a perfectly good job of reducing the respiratory droplets that you're putting out and protecting other people around you. Okay, now let's talk about wearing a sock mask, making your very own limited edition sock mask in, wait for it, three minutes or less. Here we go. Our very own Valeria Urbina, who is a member of our team, is going to show us how to accomplish this feat. Hi, everyone. My name is Valeria Urbina, and I'm a second year medical student at Paul Foster School of Medicine here in El Paso, Texas. Today, I will show you how to make a face mask using a sock. Although these masks are not as efficient as medical grade masks, they are a cheap and easy way to protect yourself and those around you when you're out in public running essential errands. Let's get started. First, we're going to talk about what you're going to need. You're going to need a sock that ideally is white, scissors, and something for extra protection. Today, I will be using this paper towel. So the first step is to make a rectangle using the sock. As you can see, I've made markings on this sock where I will be cutting. So from this edge, right across, all the way through the other edge, I made a marking. Same thing on the other end of the sock. From one edge, all the way across to the other. When I cut at these markings, I will be able to make a rectangle. This is how your rectangle should look. You can see, just a regular rectangle. Um, the length should be about five inches and a half. If it's a little bit more than that, that's better. It's going to cover more of your face. So now we're going to cut again. This time we're going to make the ear pieces. So, as you can see, I made more markings. From this edge of the sock, all the way towards the middle, about half a centimeter away from the end of the sock. And I made the same marking on the other side. From the edge, straight towards the middle, about half a centimeter away from the end. So now, we will go ahead and use our scissors to cut across both of these markings. And this is how your face mask should look. Now, as you can see, you have ear pieces on each side. So now we add the extra protection because the more layers, the more protection. So I'm gonna use this paper towel. I'm gonna fold it in half and fold it again. It should be about the size of your face mask. There we go. As you can see, there's an excess amount of paper towel. So I will go ahead and cut it off. So now your paper towel is going to serve as a filter. So you place this inside. And now you have a face mask. Excellent form. Simple, easy to make face mask at home. Covers the nose and the mouth. Both things that we're looking for here. Finally, let's end on a little with a little bit about um, hand sanitizer. Before we say anything else about it, we want to note that the best way to protect yourself, not hand sanitizer, but make sure that you thoroughly wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, as, as Sintu showed us earlier, with soap and water. Remember, you're also practicing your, vocal, your vocals, uh, so don't forget about it. Uh, but sometimes you're out and about, it's not really convenient to go find a sink or, or soap, so it doesn't hurt to have a backup hand sanitizer uh, just in case you're, you're in a pinch. And then, Whenever you get home, wash your hands as soon as you get back. 
You do want to make sure, though, that the hand sanitizers you're using don't have uh, or don't don't belong on this list of hand sanitizers that are known to have toxic substances. So if you want to go home and search, um, look what chemicals are in your hand sanitizer, look them up, make sure that they're not on this FDA list. If you do want to make your own hand sanitizer at home, uh, a little uh, personal project, you can. Just keep in mind, there's not any way to verify uh, with accuracy that the hand sanitizer you're going to be making actually has the requisite minimum 60% alcohol content. So you want to make sure that you're, whatever sanitizer you're using has at least 60% alcohol content. But if you choose to make one at home, uh, you, you could use this uh, one eighth cup of aloe vera, one fourth a cup of 99% isopropyl alcohol, put that in an empty plastic container. And then if you want, you can add some essential oil or peppermint for some fragrance. Folks, that's all we have today. Uh, we thank you for listening. We hope that this was uh, informative and helpful for you. And I hope you all stay safe and healthy out there. Thank you so much. Take care.